throughout basically all of history, prehistoric animals were way bigger than what we have now. Like modern bears are tiny compared to ancient ones, and great white sharks are practically goldfish next to the megalodon. But then there's the blue whale, which is the biggest thing that's ever lived, and it showed up like 5 million years ago eating shrimp. Why is the blue whale so big? when everything else in our modern day is so small. So here's the thing, for most of Earth's history, if you took an animal from the past and put it next to its modern version, the old one wins every time in the size department. Polar bears right now are the biggest bears on the planet. They can hit maybe 1,500 pounds if they're really pushing it, almost as much as your mom. But back in the ice age, there was this thing called the short-faced bear. That animal was over 2,000 pounds, sometimes more. It was just bigger. Or take sharks. Great whites are what we think of when we think scary ocean predator. They're about 15 to 20 feet long, maybe two tons if you find a really big one. Megalodon was 50 to 60 feet and weighed somewhere around 50 to 70 tons. That is not just a little bit bigger. That is over double its size. Even take fish. The biggest bony fish alive today is the ocean sunfish. It is a weird looking thing and it weighs about two tons. Back in the Jurassic period, there was lead sixthes. That thing was 16 meters long and weighed 45 tons. Land mammals, same story. The biggest one now is the African elephant, which is around 6 tons. The biggest one back then was Parasaurethium. It looks sort of, I don't know, imagine a rhino but taller and no horn and way heavier. It was about 15 to 20 tons. So that is the rule that we've established. Prehistoric is bigger modern is smaller. We kind of just accept that because dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals exist in our brains as these massive things. Museums have the giant skeletons and we grew up with Jurassic Park. It just makes sense. But then you take a look at the blue whale and you find out that a blue whale weighs 150 to 200 tons. The biggest dinosaur that we've ever found is probably Argentinosaurus and it was this huge long necked thing from Argentina. It lived 95 million years ago and probably was the heaviest land animal that has ever existed. It weighed maybe 90 to 100 tons. But the blue whale is almost pushing double of that. A modern animal is twice as heavy as the biggest dinosaur. That's not how this is supposed to work. The rule is prehistoric animals are bigger. But here's this whale that showed up recently and just completely broke everything. And when I say recently, I mean it. Blue whales have only been this massive for about 5 million years, which is nothing. Dinosaurs had 165 million years to figure out how to get big. Marine reptiles had even longer than that. All that time, and none of them got even close to 200 tons. But this whale that spends its day eating tiny shrimp just rolled in and won. And it is not even close. We're not talking about a small difference here. We're talking about double the weight of the biggest land animal ever, which raises a pretty obvious question. What the hell happened? Why is the blue whale so different from every modern animal we have today? Well, it turns out the answer isn't what you would think. It is way more basic. The problem is gravity. That's it. That's the whole thing. When you live on land, you have to hold hold yourself up. Your bones have to support your weight, and there's this thing where as you get bigger, your weight goes up faster than your bones can handle. I'm not going to get into the math because nobody cares, but the short version is that your body gets heavier way faster than your skeleton gets longer. Argentinosaurus had legs that were thicker than a person is wide. They were just absolutely massive columns of bone, and even with that, it was probably close to the limit of what's physically possible. At 100 tons on land, you're one bad step away from your leg just snapping in two. You want to know what happened? if you try to go bigger? Probably not because you can't. There's maybe one dinosaur that might have been heavier and that was Maripunisaurus. We only have one bone of it. Well, we don't even have that anymore because it got lost. But based on the measurements from the 1800s, some people think it could have been 100 to 150 tons. But here's the thing. If dinosaurs that big actually worked, we would have found more of them. We don't. We have one lost bone and a bunch of maybe. That probably tells you something about whether a 150 ton land animal is actually possible. Even smaller giants had problems. Paraceratherium, that big rhino thing we just talked about, was only 20 tons. Only and it still needed these huge thick legs and probably moved pretty slow because every step was a structural engineering problem. But blue whales, they don't deal with any of this. Water holds them up. That is the entire secret. They're not fighting gravity the same way. Their bones don't need to support 200 tons of weight because the ocean is doing most of the work. They can just exist at that size without collapsing. You would think that other ocean animals would have figured this out, and some did. Shastasaurus was this massive marine reptile from the Triassic. It was about 21 meters long 
long and weighed maybe 80 tons, which is huge, but it's still a lot less than the blue whale. So water helps, but it's not the whole answer. If it was, Shastasaurus would have kept going. Something else must have stopped it. But for dinosaurs, they were probably done at 100 tons. The ones that tried to go bigger either didn't exist or didn't last. Meanwhile, blue whales are out here at 200 tons just cruising around eating shrimp. Turns out being on land is a massive disadvantage when you're trying to be the biggest thing ever. Who knew? But solving gravity still doesn't fix the food problem though. Being big means you need to eat a lot of food. And I mean a lot. This is where things get really stupid for anything trying to be giant. Argentinosaurus probably needed to eat hundreds of pounds of plants every single day. It was just constantly eating, and plants don't have that many calories in them, so you need to eat a ton of them just to get enough energy, which means you're walking around all day on those massive legs we just talked about looking for fresh trees to eat. Walking burns energy, which means you need more food, which means more walking. It is a whole thing. Parasiotherium had the same deal. It had this long neck so it could reach tall trees. Great, but that just meant it spent basically all day eating leaves. Grab some leaves, chew, swallow, walk to the next tree, repeat for like 16 hours a day probably. Even giant predators had it rough. Spinosaurus was about 7 to 9 tons. That is way smaller than Argentinosaurus, but it still needed to eat a bunch. And it ate fish, which sounds fine until you realize that it had to catch those fish one at a time. To wade through rivers, spot a fish, grab it and eat it, and do that over and over. That takes energy. Now here's where blue whales just completely broke the game. Krill are these tiny shrimp thing, and they form these massive swarms in cold ocean waters. We're talking millions of them just hanging out in one spot. It is a dense cloud of food. Blue whales swim through these swarms with their mouths open. That's it. They take in like 70 cubic meters of water in one gulp, and all of that krill just goes in. Then they push the water back out through these baleen plates and keep the krill. Gulp, filter, eat. The bigger your mouth, the more krill that you can get per gulp. So being huge actually helps instead of hurting here. You're not chasing anything. You're not fighting anything. The food is just there. You swim to where it is, open your mouth, and eat. No land animal ever had access to this. There's nothing that's been even close. And here's the weird part. There was actually a filter feeding fish back in the Jurassic, lead Sichthys, and it was about 16 meters long, and it ate plankton, which is sort of the same idea as blue whales, and it got to be about 45 tons. But that's still less than half of what a blue whale weighs. So filter feeding helps, but it's not the whole answer. Something else was stopping lead sickthies from getting bigger. And that same thing stopped basically every other ocean animal too. Because when you look at the biggest ocean creatures ever, none of them got past a certain point. Shastasaurus was 80 tons. Megalodon was maybe 70. That giant predatory whale, Leviathan, was about 50 tons. All of them though smaller than blue whales. Even though they lived in water, even though they had millions of years to work with. Which brings us to the next problem, which is breathing. As it turns out, gills are kind of a disaster waiting to happen. Fish are stuck with gills, and that's a way bigger problem than you would think. When you're small, gills work fine. You've got enough gill surface area to pull oxygen out of the water for your body. But as you get bigger, your body volume goes up faster than your gill surface area. At some point, you can't get enough oxygen through your gills to support how big you are. This is why no fish has ever gotten anywhere close to a blue whale's size. Megalodon was enormous for a shark. It was 50 to 60 feet long and it probably weighed about 50 to 70 tons, which is as big as a medium-sized whale, but it had gills. And at 70 tons, those gills were probably already pushed the limit. If you go any bigger, it probably wouldn't be able to breathe well enough to support that bodies. Lead Sichthys, that filter-feeding fish that we just talked about, same problem. It was eating the right food, tons of plankton everywhere. It was in water, so no gravity issues, but it topped out at 45 tons because it had gills. That was the ceiling. Whales don't have gills. They have lungs, they breathe air, and air has way more oxygen in it than water does. Plus, lungs are just better at scaling up. A blue whale takes this massive breath at the surface and stores oxygen in its blood and muscles, and then it dives down and feeds. When it needs more air, it comes back up and breathes again. A fish is stuck with whatever oxygen is in the water right now. If there's not enough, too bad you can't just go get more. There is a hard limit. In fact, if you look behind me, you'll notice two fish tanks. If you do not have enough air in your water, your fish can actually suffocate while swimming in the water. As a kid, I didn't understand that concept ever, but as an adult, I've learned about it now, and water can actually use up the available oxygen in it to the point where things living in it start suffocating. Crazy. Now, you might be thinking, okay, but what about marine reptiles? They had lungs, they breathed air, and good point. Shastasaurus was a marine reptile. 
reptile. It had lungs, it breathed air. It got to about 80 tons, which is bigger than any fish we've ever got. So clearly having lungs helps, but even it still didn't get to 200 tons. Something else stopped it, and we'll get to that. Same with the Mosasaurus, another marine reptile. Lungs only got to about 10 to 15 tons, which is way smaller than Shastasaurus, and also way, way smaller than blue whales. Predator X, that massive pliosaur, about 45 tons. Lungs, but still way smaller. So lungs are better than gills, obviously, but having lungs alone doesn't automatically get you to blue whale size. Fish are just completely locked out of the biggest size category because of gills, but marine reptiles, even with lungs, still hit a wall somewhere around 80 tons. Blue whales are much more than that, which means that they must have figured out something else that let them push past where everything else stopped. And what was that thing that they pushed past? Well, water temperature. Water pulls heat out of your body fast, way faster than air. If you're small and warm-blooded and you jump into cold ocean water, you're going to lose heat so quickly that you'll probably die. This is why you don't see a lot of small mammals living in the Arctic Ocean, because they would freeze. But if you're massive, this flips around completely. When you're huge, you've got way more body mass generating heat than you have skin surface losing heat. So you actually stay warm because you're making heat faster than the cold water can take it away. In simple terms, being fat in the water can save your life. Blue whales hang out in the Arctic and Antarctic waters because they are so big. This matters because those freezing cold waters are where the krill is. Cold water holds more oxygen. More oxygen means more plankton, and more plankton means more krill eating that plankton. The coldest parts of the ocean are the most productive. That's where the food is. So blue whales being huge lets them feed in the exact place where the most food exists, which is sort of perfect. It is almost suspiciously perfect. Marine reptiles did not have this option. Shastasaurus, that 80-ton marine reptile from the Tarantula, lived when oceans were generally warm. It was probably cold-blooded, maybe a little warm-blooded, but not fully. So it didn't need to worry about freezing to death because the water wasn't that cold. But it also couldn't access cold water food because it couldn't handle those temperatures. Mosasaurus, same thing. About 10 to 15 tons, Lake Cretaceous, warmer waters, not built for the polar oceans. These animals were stuck in temperate or warm parts of the ocean, which is fine, but those areas don't have the massive krill blooms that polar waters have. Now, there was one warm-blooded whale that could have done this, and that was Liviatan, the giant predatory whale that we just talked about. It had lungs, and it was warm-blooded, so it could go into cold waters if it wanted to, but it didn't feed on krill. It ate other whales and other large marine creatures, so it didn't need to be in the polar oceans. It hunted in warmer areas where the prey was. Blue whales are the only animal that pull all of this together. They're warm-blooded so they can handle cold water, they're huge so they generate enough heat to stay warm, and are filter feeders so that they can eat the krill, and they live in the coldest oceans on Earth where nobody else can really compete. Every other giant either couldn't handle the cold or didn't need to be there. Blue whales needed to be there and could handle it, which is pretty convenient. But none of this matters if the food isn't there in the first place. When you look at the prehistoric timeline, you will see that blue whales only got this massive in the last 5 million years, which is pretty recent, like absurdly recent. Like I was saying earlier, dinosaurs roamed for around 165 million years marine reptiles even longer than that. None of them got 200 tons, but then the blue whale shows up and does it in 5 million years. The reason is pretty simple. The food didn't exist before. Massive krill blooms in polar waters are a relatively new thing. They only started happening a few million years ago when the ice ages began. Before that, those krill swarms just weren't there at that scale. The ice ages changed ocean circulation. Cold water at the poles sinks, and warmer water rushes in to replace it. That moving water brings nutrients up from the deep ocean and those nutrients feed the plankton. Plankton then feed the krill and then the krill form these enormous swarms. Before the ice ages, the oceans were warmer overall. Warmer water doesn't hold as much oxygen. And less oxygen means less plankton. And less plankton means fewer krill. You might have some krill here and there, but not these massive concentrated clouds of them. The Mesozoic oceans, when dinosaurs were around, were warm. There was no polar ice, no massive upwelling, and no giant krill blooms. The 60s was trying to filter feed in the Jurassic. Again, and it got to 45 tons, but the food probably just wasn't dense enough for it to get bigger. It was doing the right thing, just at the wrong time. The Shastasaurus at 80 tons was eating squid in warm Triassic oceans. There was no krill to filter feed on, even if it wanted to. Predator X at 45 tons was hunting other marine reptiles. It had a predatory lifestyle. We have covered that. But also, no krill around. Mosasaurus at 50 tons, same deal. Warm, late Cretaceous oceans, hunting prey, 
no krill blooms to take advantage of. Even Liviatan, that 50-ton predatory whale from 13 million years ago, missed the window. It was warm-blooded, had lungs, lived in water, but it was eating other whales, and the huge krill swarms weren't really a thing yet. Every single one of these animals was missing at least one piece of the puzzle, usually more than one. They were either on land, so gravity stopped them, or they had gills, so breathing stopped them, or they were cold-blooded, so temperature stopped them, or they were predators, so their diet stopped them, or they lived at the wrong time, so food availability stopped them. Blue whales are the first animal to have every single piece at the same time. Water for buoyancy, lungs for breathing, warm-blooded for cold water, filter feeding for efficiency, and they showed up exactly when massive krill blooms started happening. It took 4 billion years of life on Earth for all those things to line up at once. Dinosaurs didn't fail, marine reptiles didn't fail, they just never had all the pieces, because the pieces didn't exist yet. Blue whales just got lucky with timing, like really, really lucky. But even with all of this, there is still one more thing that stops everything from getting huge. Hunting has a ceiling. That's just how it works. Every giant predator in Earth's history topped out somewhere between 50 and 80 tons. It doesn't matter if they were on land or in the ocean. It doesn't matter when they lived. They all hit roughly the same limit. Take note of all of these creatures and what they ate. Megalodon, 70 tons, ate large fish and smaller whales. Leviathan, 50 tons, ate other whales. Predator X, 45 tons, ate marine reptiles. Shastasaurus, 80 tons, ate squid and soft prey. Spinosaurus, 9 tons, ate fish, and it was way smaller because it was on land dealing with gravity. Notice that all of them are predators, and they all stop growing at a certain point. And the reason is energy. When you hunt big prey, there's a limit to how much you can eat versus how much energy you can burn catching it. If you get too big, you need more food. But catching that food takes more energy. At some point, you're burning more calories than you're getting back. That's the wall, somewhere around 50 to 80 tons, depending on what you're hunting. Filter feeding doesn't have this problem. The food doesn't run away. It doesn't fight back. It just exists in massive clouds. You swim to it, open your mouth, and eat. The energy math is completely different. And here's the part that really matters. The bigger you are, the more food you get per gulp. Your mouth is bigger, you take in more water, so you catch more krill, so being huge actually makes you better at this job instead of worse. It is a positive feedback loop. More size equals more food equals more energy to support that size. Predators just can't get that. For them, more size just means you need to catch more prey. And at some point, that becomes impossible. Even Argentinosaurus, which wasn't a predator at all, hit this problem. It was eating plants, but it still had to walk around finding enough plants to eat. That walking cost energy, and at 100 tons, it was probably close to the limit where the energy it got from plants equaled the energy it burned walking around all day. Blue whales don't walk. They don't chase. They don't fight. They just swim to where the krill is and eat it. That is the entire secret. The food is everywhere. It doesn't move, and you can eat it efficiently. No predator can do that. No herbivore on land can do that. Only filter feeders in the right ocean at the right time were able to do that. And all this is to say that blue whales aren't just the biggest animal alive right now. They're probably the biggest animal that will ever exist because that combination of factors is so specific and so rare that it happening once is already kind of absurd. It happening again seems just unlikely. Unless something weird happens with evolution in the next few billion years, or unless climate change somehow creates even more productive oceans, which I wouldn't bet on that one, that's the answer. Blue whales are bigger than any dinosaur and any other prehistoric animal because they found a cheat code that didn't exist until 5 million years ago, and everything else just had bad timing or bad luck or the wrong body plan. Turns out being the biggest thing ever is mostly just about being lucky. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to give it a like and comment down below what other topics you'd like me to talk about in my upcoming videos. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this and hit the hype button so more people just like you can see this video. And if you want to watch another one of my videos right now, you can watch the video on screen now.